Within a functioning democracy such as ours, government should maintain an environment that allows reporters to access important information. But the government must also protect the public from media that misuses or falsifies information. Lately, the government's challenge to allow press freedom whilst attempting to enforce order has been in the spotlight. On the one hand, Minister Tweya is pushing for the Access to Information Bill. Access to information has never been and shall never be a luxury item, but a basic tenet for the public good. On the other hand, CRAN, the Communication Regulatory Authority of Namibia, is pushing for what seems to be stringent regulations on many media houses in the form of a broadcast code. With us in studio is Natasha Tibignani, who represents the Action Coalition. Namibia's press freedom is perceived to be under pressure. On the one hand, Namibia's first access to information bill is being drafted by the Ministry of Information. On the other hand, CRAN, the Communications Regulatory Authority of Namibia, is pushing for a broadcast code. This is whilst the media has already put in place several self-regulatory bodies. With us in studio tonight is Natasha Tibignani, Director of MISA in Namibia, representing the Action Coalition. Good evening. Good evening, Alna, and thanks for having us. Great to see you here in studio. Uh, Natasha, tell us about Action. Who is Action? Action is a coalition, a grouping of media and civil society organizations. Um, the coalition was launched um, towards the end of 2012, and with that came a campaign, which we called the Action Campaign. Um, and the main aim of the campaign was to lobby and advocate for an access to information law, but also at the same time to raise awareness around the fact that access to information is a fundamental human right. Now, there are, there are various stakeholders, MISA and Namibia being one of them. Um, which other organizations or individuals are a part of your, your coalition? Yeah, well, we started as MISA Namibia, IPPR, the Institute of Public Policy Research, and Inside Namibia magazine. Those were the three organizations that started it. Um, and that was the secretariat for most of the time, really. Um, and it was only earlier this year that a number of other organizations joined the coalition because, I don't know, 2016 was just a really happening here yeah, in terms of access to information like for example we, the action collision went from three to eleven organizations because we felt like um, we needed more um, organizations to add voice to to our campaign so we had a strategic planning earlier in the year and by April we had 11 organizations joining us and then on the other side we had the Ministry of ICT doing a lot of work in terms of updating itself on access to information they um, started um, the process of revising the information policy um, they um, worked on a new communication strategy, which is something that we have called for for the past couple of years, saying that we need government institutions to have one um, way of communicating because one of the biggest problems we've seen in access to information is that there was no guideline. Nobody working in government had uh, a set way of how to communicate on behalf of the government of the Republic. Yeah, and I think, I think that's why, because um, obviously the, the media practitioners feel strongly about access to information, but um, for the man on the street, the access to information bill, um, describe to me what, what are we really talking about here? Access of information, what information, by whom? Yeah, and that's just the thing, and, and, and once we get the law, the hard work is really going to start because then we have to raise awareness on what is this all about? What is this law all about? Basically access to information. Let's start with the media first. Why is it important to the media? It is important to the media because our job first and foremost is to inform and educate the public, um, to empower them with information um, so that they can become critical active citizens in our democracy. So in order for us to be able to play that role effectively, we need to be able to access information from government because in the end government is the biggest 
um, stakeholder in our nation as it is. So in order for us to understand what public services are available, in order for us to, as business people, say, I want to start a small business. Ali Angula is part of this documentary on ATI for development in Namibia. And what she said, like, for example, as a business person, if she wants to go and start a business in Hibion, um, she needs to understand what is the population there. How many of the people in Hibion can she employ? How many... Um, she needs water to run her factory. Is there water? How much water is available? She needs electricity. Is there? So, for example, before you even start a business, you need so much information because you want your business to be successful, right? Um, so um, you need to ensure that you have all of that um, information available. So business people need information. Students need information. Um, ordinary citizens, say, for example, I am a person living with HIV. Where can I go? Which clinic is the best clinic to go for for me to get the best treatment. So for you, example, so if see. I need food aid, where do I go to get food aid? Um, if I want to send my child to the best school in, in the Vintuk district, which mm. school is mm. the best school? So you're saying essentially um, uh, that the government maybe does have this data available, um, but uh, you know the access to information bill would make this data accessible to everyone. In some cases and in many cases, government also doesn't have the data available. Um, we had a panel discussion on um, international, the first international day for universal access to information. And Dani Boyson, the editor of the Republican, said that um, one of the biggest problems we have is also that we don't know how to manage information. Um, so, for example, you as a researcher at the Ministry of Agriculture, for example, go and does a survey in a village somewhere. Um, you do the survey, you hand it over to your supervisor, maybe in a hard copy form, not in a digital form, like what happens to that information, which is actually critical. And where do we store information and how do we archive it, you know? Okay, so this would, this would really then set uh, this motion in place to deal with all these yeah, issues. Yeah, this mm. bill looks at um, how we, um, store information, how we disseminate information. Um, it's really a guideline for us as Namibians to um, better manage and disseminate information. And just quickly again to touch on the media practitioners. I mean myself as a journalist, I know how incredibly hard it is to publish a story if you haven't had official comment. Yeah. Um, so would that... So much credibility. Yes. So that's, that's really the big thing, I think. Um, could you explain then the value of this for journalists? Is that something that all journalists struggle with? Mm, some, uh, a lot of people disagree with me when I say this, but I think in Namibia, um, what I've seen also is um, access to information is also from the media perspective. It's also dependent on the quality of the journalist. Um, you know, it's about the relationships that we build with official sources um, and unofficial sources. So I've seen um, so-called controversial journalists quote official sources you know um so i also think that journalists we need to try to be the best journalist we can be and uphold professionalism and ethics at all time um but yeah one of the things we continually say in our annual report on access to information which is available online at misa.org um, where we assess public institutions every year to see how transparent they are um, what we've seen also what we've said i think in the last year's report is that um you, you, get, you, you provide more credibility to a story as a journalist when you have an official source. But when you, what we find is that some ministers are open to the media, they have a, a, a good relationship with the media, they understand the role of the media in our democracy, but most of our political leaders don't understand the role of the media in our democracy. And that's why you will find that some of them sometimes make very unfair thoughts that were not thought through because they are rather ignorant on the role of media in, in, yeah. in democracy. Um, and we need to, they need to, and I always ask them that if we can engage on a platform where they just, I love engaging with politicians because I always use it as an opportunity so that they understand that we need you and you need us. We need, we want a knowledge society. We want Namibia to be a country um, that, where people are literate and, and critically um, thinking and engaged in our democracy um, because we want this amazing Namibia. I'm, and I'm always so proud when it comes, to, when I talk as a Namibian around freedom of expression because 
Namibia is very progressive when it comes to freedom of expression. If you compare us to the rest of the world, we're quite progressive. And I feel that we can be this African country that shows the world that yes, um, we have all the freedom that we have, but we take our responsibilities very seriously. Tasha, I'm gonna stop you there for an ad break. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the Access to the Information Bill is a victory for press freedom in our country. But recently, Crown has proposed a new broadcast code which will have very different implications on press freedom. After the break, we discuss the newly proposed broadcast code with Natasha Tibignani, director from Misa Namibia. Namibia has over 40 radio stations and a handful of television broadcasters. If CRAN's proposed broadcast code takes effect, all of these stations will have to adhere to stricter regulations. Regarding content, the code proposes a much-needed local content quota. However, the code also places infringements upon the type of content that may be aired, as well as when and how advertising should be set during programming. With us in studio after the break is Natasha Tibignani speaking on behalf of the Action Coalition. The Access to Information Bill will improve the transparency and will ensure Namibia's continued status as an African country with enhanced press freedom. The proposed broadcast code, however, has far more complicated implications. Uh, Natasha, now let's talk about the broadcast code. Proposed. Proposed broadcast code. Um, now, according to the Communications Act, um, our ministry has the opportunity to, at any time, stand up and call for a broadcast mm -hmm. code. Um, first and foremost, do we not have any regulations in place? We have what, what is called the self-regulatory system. And the self-regulatory system is, is one of the most, um, it is the most preferred system globally. Um, the AU has made it clear in its declaration on f freedom of expression in Africa that it is the best, best system to maintain high standards and media freedom in a country. And Namibia has been a self-regulatory, we followed the self-regulatory model since 2009. What does that mean exactly, self-regulatory? Self-regulatory is when, it is said that the media self-regulates itself, that's how it's described, but it's actually not, not like that. Because if you look at, at the Namibian um, context, our media ombudsman is a lawyer. Um, a human rights lawyer for that matter. And then um, the EFN is the Editors Forum of Namibia, which is a group, um, group of editors um, from different media houses, um, from all sectors of the media, because people always forget that we have different types of media. There's independent media such as One Africa, there's public media such as NBC, um, and um, then there's different types of newspapers. So the Editors Forum, reflects this diversity of the Namibian media sector. Um, they have nothing to do with the um, holding the media accountable. That is the, the media ombudsman's job. But the Editors Forum is sort of a body that engages around issues that affect the media in mm -hmm. the country. Okay, so you're saying when we're talking about self-regulation, this is pretty much to make sure that people aren't slandered, that um, the information that's carried across in a newspaper is accurate and fair. The, the, the media ombudsman is there to hold those accountable that are acting in a, that are found to act in an unprofessional and unethical way right. in the media. Okay. So it is really, he, that office is responsible for um, when, here's the thing that is very important about our system, is that it won't work if members of the public don't engage um, with the media ombudsman. So if the subsequent one, Africa, that was said or you saw that um, you felt was unprofessional, was a lie, um, yet was told as, as the truth, um, you can, for free, whether you can send an email or there are different ways you can engage with the Office of the Media Ombudsman, um, lay an official complaint. Um, there are different processes. Um, for example, um, if the Media Ombudsman um, 
assesses the case, then he would make a judgment. If some one of the parties are not um, mm. satisfied with the outcome of that, it can go to an appeals committee. But I mean, which is a bigger essentially, body. there is there is a body. There is a place yes. that I can take my complaint about an article. I can go to the media. An article or something I heard on the radio yes. or something I saw online. All right. You know, any media platform, yes. the media ombudsman is there to hold those who transgress responsibly. Okay, so, um, so now why would we at this stage need a broadcast code? You need to ask Cran that question, <laughs> my dear. Because we're also asking them that. And mm -hmm. because last year they had this public hearing and we were like, what? <laughs> you know, and then we explained that actually, you know, Namibia, we prescribed to the self-regulatory system and then they raised um, valid points uh, where there were weaknesses, where they were saying, yeah, but we get complaints like this and we get complaints like that. And then what we did as the editors forum um, and, and other stakeholders is we went and we looked at our media code of ethics, um, which was launched in 2009 when we launched the whole self-regulatory system. Then we looked at the... Um, Media Namibian Media Code of Ethics, and we adapted it and we amended it and we included those concerns that okay. they had. Yes. Um, and we have a much better Media Code of Ethics yes. now, thanks to them. And you see, that's why we're saying we need to hold each other accountable. Yes, yes. You know? Okay, so, so Cran has come um, forth with public consultations on this broadcast code. Again, because they did it last year and then we went yeah. as a media mm -hmm. and we improved the situation, mm -hmm. which they should say thank you for. Mm -hmm. uh, but then this year they came again with another public hearing. Mm -hmm. with now, now what exactly is in this proposed broadcast code? The broadcast code is about content. Mm -hmm. um, um, they want 20% um, local content. They're looking at um, children. Um, how shall we, how shall I put this? Um, because we need to recognize the television, for example, that there are certain things you can't show at certain times because we have vulnerable children um, online. So they're looking at, at um, children, how we, the media should respond to children. They're looking at how the media should respond when it's um, election time, like ensuring that all um, political parties um, get free and equal access to airtime, stuff like that. Now, these but things seem fair, but there are other aspects that aren't, don't seem as fair. For instance, advertising, um, they, they're specific. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, sorry, thanks for highlighting that because I'm, I'm not in the commercial media, mm -hmm. um, so I sometimes forget that as well. Exactly. Um, um, advertising, what was the thing that they said about, can you tell us what is it, what it is about, what they say about advertising? Mm -hmm. That you can, you must have, they, they provide um, how many, every, they tell you when you must advertise basically. Mm -hmm. That's what they're telling you. Um, they give you the times, like after five minutes, after 10 minutes, you must have an ad break. And, and here's the thing, what they don't recognize is that mm -hmm. commercial uh, media and public media, commercial media depend, independent media depend on advertising. And they compete with we, each you other. You cannot these, have these yeah. cameras and these mm -hmm. lights if you don't have an advertiser that advertises on you. With NBC, it's a different situation. NBC, NBC is funded by the public, so there's always money because we're always mm -hmm. paying our tax. Mm -hmm. um, so you cannot prescribe to an independent broadcaster. You should not mm -hmm. describe, prescribe to an independent broadcaster mm -hmm. how it should and make I, its I know multi-choice was one of the players that said this might deter investment in the broadcast industry. Oh, my dear, the way multi-choice, if this uh, broadcasting code is uh, passed, the way multi-choice will be, multi-choice will basically have to close down if it has to adhere to all of these um, rules and regulations that CRAN proposes. But here's the thing. Um, we, ha as, as, as a civil society, we need to sit with CRAN again because they explained that this issue is part of this strategic plan. And I can understand that a few years ago they sat down and they're like, okay, this is what we want to do without consultation. Um, but now they realize that it goes against the fundamental uh, principles that we have in Namibia as this media-free country that uh, has... A, an acceptable, effective self-regulatory system. And the nice thing about our system and model is that we recognize that we live in an ever-changing world. So how we regulate ourselves is going to change. And if you look at the proposals that CRAN makes, the new media code of ethics, everything that they propose, most of what they propose, we already deal with in the code of ethics. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, because it was so well improved um, that if you look at the broadcasting code of conduct of CLAN and our code of ethics, it almost looks the same, except when it comes to the advertising. Now, what? Now, if people think, okay, this new, newly proposed broadcast code, some might think it's only going to affect NBC, uh, television, One Africa, and multi-choice. Um, but really, who, who will be affected by the broadcast code? Everybody that has a license to broadcast. So those are radio stations and television stations. Okay. Um, and the issue here is that, can I, I think... I think there's a lot of, um, we don't talk to each other sometimes, mm -hmm. you know? And I think mm -hmm. that, because we've tried, after the public hearing last year, we've really tried to have, as Lisa Nomavia, meetings with CRAN. Mm -hmm. um, we even had a legal overview done and all of these things, you know? But uh, I don't know, sometimes people just don't, don't want to engage. And then mm -hmm. we, we do things that are not in the best interest of the country. So now, um, for the media practitioners who are worried about broadcast code, how do they get involved in these consultations? Well, the consultations are done, basically. Um, okay. There was that public hearing, um, the oral one, which was, was just embarrassing. Um, then there was the, the way we all had to make written um, submissions. The deadline was the 20th, which we did. Um, but we have been very busy around this access to information issue the past couple of weeks. So as from next week, um, we need to focus on the broadcasting code issue again. We need to sit around a table as stakeholders and we need to talk through the issue. And I can assure you that we're not going to have this broadcasting code. As an activist, <laughs> I am assuring that's not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Natasha, for your time. It was a very interesting conversation. Pleasure to be Viewers, here. that's unfortunately all from us on One Exclusive tonight. Just remember that this story will be uploaded to the One Africa Television YouTube channel as well as our Facebook page for you to share with those who might have missed it. Engage with me by SMSing your comments on tonight's story to 555. SMS is charged at $1 million. Good night, viewers.